Ferreira is lost to us. He denounced God in public and surrendered the faith. That's not possible. Father Ferreira risked his life to spread our faith all over Japan. It seems to me that our mission here is more urgent than ever. We must go find Father Ferreira. This is in your hearts, then, both of you? Yes. Then I must trust God has put it down. I think it's, it's become a passionate film for all of us. It's so moving, this film. And uh, so we've all fallen in love with it and are very glad that we were able to make the cut and to help him get it made. But it meant, you know, the, the lower budget meant lots of things that he had to change about how he made movies. Um, and that's why we made it in Taiwan, where, where things were, were quite inexpensive. And um, the, where the location, uh, the mountains of Taiwan look very much like Japan. So that worked out really well. It was arduous to get up into them to shoot, but very much paid off. The film has the most beautiful evocation of the landscape, and uh, everybody comments on that when they see it. One of the things that people have to understand about the movie is that it was extremely dangerous for these two priests to go in. Um, anyone practicing Christianity was immediately uh, either tortured or executed. So uh, they're, they are on a very dangerous journey, and they have to creep into the to the country uh, at night, and um, the, the villagers have to hide them carefully. But of course, eventually somebody tattles on them, and the poor villagers suffer because of that. And then um, the two priests have to separate, which is very painful. They've, they've grown up together. They've become priests together. They've traveled for two long years to get to Japan. Um, and so uh, it's very painful for them to have to separate. And then Rodriguez is just lost in the wilderness. The price for your glory is their suffering. It's too dangerous. We asked for this mission. I think Marty uh, approached this movie with a very deliberate intention of not making it like a lot of movies we see today with slam bang crash sound and uh, fast cutting. Uh, I think he wanted everybody, hopefully, in the beginning of the movie to calm down and start to think and feel about uh, what they are seeing. He didn't want to tell people what to think. He's quite notorious for fantastic use of music in his movies, but in this one he was adamant that he wanted a, not a traditional score, that he wanted any uh, score there was to evolve out of the sound of cicadas or the sound of the waves, not to be obvious and not to tell people what to think, um, to have them engage with the movie and begin to think, to feel really deeply, uh, which results in people being very emotional at the end of the film or, or practically catatonic from the effect it's had on them. And uh, he does that through a very classical style of shooting, and also the pace of the the whole pace of the movie is not quick; uh, it's deliberately that way. And I think gradually, what I hope is happening to people is that they begin to calm down from this mad sort of pace of our life these days, and begin to feel, um, in a way maybe they've not been doing for a long time. Uh, and gradually, as the movie progresses, that uh, they engage, I think, more and more with it. And then the stunning ending of the film really wallops them right between, <laughs> between the eyes and leaves them thinking for weeks afterwards.